So we just want to introduce ourselves now. My name is Allison Sternal, and I'm one of the academic advisors in the College of Education. Hi, everyone. I'm Michelle. I am the other undergraduate advisor in the College of Education. And we're so happy to meet you. We just wanted to let you know that we are your advisors from the minute you start at SDSU, actually from even before, because if you are a, a transfer student, there's a chance that maybe you already emailed us or talked to us or the support system from the moment you join us to the time that you graduate and beyond. We are super excited to help students um, find their paths while they're in um, child and family development and in the College of Education. Um, a little bit, my background is that I'm a former elementary school teacher. Um, I got my teaching credential at SDSU and my master's. So I'm a, I'm a proud SDSU alum. Um, and I love working with college students and, and helping students kind of figure out where they're going. It's become a real passion of mine. And then I um, started at SDSU about six years ago. I've been working with child development for the last two years. Um, and one of my favorite things about working with child family development students is getting to work with you from the beginning. Um, so when you start here as a freshman, all the way up until you graduate as a senior and all the stuff in between that. So meeting with you once a semester to make sure that every class counts. That is one of my advising mantra is I want to make sure that every class you take counts. And, you know, in between there, if you want to take that art class because you're really interested in art or that basket weaving class, sure, that's fine. But other than that, we want to make sure that every class counts. We want you to feel like you're a part of our community. So we put on registration workshops. We put on... Um, lunch on the lawns where we really get to know our students. We invite you to come and have lunch with us, but our only rule is we do not talk about advising because we want to know who you are. Uh, we want to know what your, your latest Netflix binge is. What are you listening to this season? Um, so that is one of the reasons why I love being an advisor and I look forward to being able to work with you. So you will definitely see us again at New Student Orientation, but before we get to that, We'd also like to introduce you to our department chair, Dr. Garrity. Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Garrity. And like Allison said, I'm the chair of the department. I'm also an Aztec. Um, I always tell my students that I went to college and I studied economics and English. And when I graduated, I realized I really wanted to work with kids. So I actually went to community college in San Diego. I took classes at City. I didn't go to Grossmont. That was kind of far for me, but I went to City. I went to Mesa. I went to ECC and I got my associate's degree. And then I came to San Diego State and got my master's degree in child and family development. And this is one of my very favorite days of the year. I love meeting our new students. Um, I'm really proud of our department. I'm really proud of our faculty. I have to say that Allison and Michelle, so many times I'll have a question about prerequisites or any question that I have and I email them and they get right back to me and they're super responsive. So um, welcome and I'm excited to share some more about the program with you in a little bit. So we actually are really fortunate to have a current, a real live current CFD student with us and um, Natasha has an appointment later today so we want to make sure that she had a chance to talk about why she chose CFD as a major, what she likes about it, um, the opportunities, and also to tell you a little bit about the child and family development student organization. So Natasha, take it away. All right, hello everyone. I'm glad you all could make it. Uh, my name is Natasha. I'm a third year um, here at SDSU, um, and I chose CFD as my major um, basically because I really I knew I wanted to be a teacher, but I also really liked psychology. So I saw CFD as an option, and it kind of it's just everything with kids, which I was really interested in, and I thought it was really neat because um, liberal studies, um, elementary education is a great major, um, but 
I wanted to kind of go more like further than that, like more than just teaching and CFD really offers that. Um, you learn a lot of developmental psych, um, you learn like um, policies and like childcare and stuff like that. And um, how like physical needs of children, like developmental needs, it's just really neat. It basically just ties everything about kids together. So that's why I chose it. Cause I knew I wanted to work with kids, but um, it made me kind of nervous to do elementary education where it's just one thing. So that's why I really like CFD. It really gives you an opportunity to learn about a lot of different um, topics surrounding working with kids. Um, and my career goal is to be a teacher. And um, the CFD major has provided me with a lot of opportunities. Um, one of the biggest opportunities it provided me with was working at the Children's Center. Um, I went to the Children's Center initially and in in, you have a lab class, 270 lab. And once you do that, you get to like go in the Children's Center and you observe. And I remember asking um, Sarah Sanders, like when we had our orientation, like how I could start working there because I was really interested in it. And she told me like the when the applications went up and everything and I applied and I um, got a job there and it's a really unique experience because it's like a bunch of CFD majors and you get to like work in the classroom and implement curriculum and everything. And even if you don't work there, there's an internship class where you are able to work there as well and implement curriculum if you don't want to work there. Um, but it's just, that was definitely a really great experience to be able to work at the SDSU Children's Center. And also um, it brought me the CFDSO, which is the Child and Family Development Student Org. And it was the first thing I got involved in here at State. And I was a freshman, like first semester freshman. I didn't know anything about the school really. And I think I saw um, an email from the advisor that was just like, oh, like CFDSO is having their meeting. And I went and I loved it. Um, I became the marketing chair my sophomore year. And then now I'm the VP. And it's, it's really great. And it provides a lot of volunteering opportunities. Um, it brings in guest speakers that help with like what you want to do for your future. Um, we had people come in talk about um, grad programs, master's programs, teaching credential, um, Teach for America. There's just a lot of opportunities being in the org and you meet other people in the major, which is really neat to be able to know your fellow classmates and getting to like hang out with them outside of the classroom. And um, so the CFDSO is basically just the student org for the major. Um, we do a variety of things. We do like volunteer work, we do social events. Um, we also have like professional workshops. Um, it's basically just a support system in the major. And we like provide a lot of growth opportunities and things to put on your resume and everything, which is really neat. And then lastly, my I was told to talk about my favorite CFD classes, but that's so hard because I have so many that I really like. Um, I really liked um, CFD 270 because um, that was like my first developmental psych class. And I really enjoyed that. I thought that was really neat. And then um, I also really liked the lab or the internship classes, 275 and then the 378s, um, being able to actually work in a classroom and implement curriculum and like work alongside a teacher is really, really neat. And then right now I'm taking 536, which is um, divorce, and which is, I didn't even realize I was going to be interested in that, but the professor is great. And it's been a really interesting class so far to learn about um, how couples and how relationships work. So yeah, and that's all I have, I believe. <laughs> um, thank you, Natasha. Well, if you can stick around for as long as you can before you need to leave, that would be great. Maybe there will be some <clears throat> questions for you, but thank you so much for talking about all of the great opportunities um, in CFDSO and in the classes that students take. Um, we're actually, that's a great segue into what our department and our major is all about. I'm gonna let Dr. Garrity talk a little bit about some of these things. Sure, so one of the things that um, is really important to us in child and family development is everything that we do is really grounded in social emotional development. We believe that children develop in the context of relationships. You're gonna hear that over and over and over again, um, but we really, it really undergirds everything that we do. We also really look at um, individual development and context. So how do children develop in families? How do families develop in communities? How does public policy impact children and families? Um, we also really have this learn by doing philosophy. So it was nice to hear Natasha talk about some of our labs. We really want our students to connect theory to practice. So 
we give you lots of opportunities to go out into the community and work with real children and real families um, so that you can just have that experience and then come back to class. And we just think you can really engage with the content of the class in a much deeper way. Um, CFD faculty are amazing. Um, like I said, we really believe that everybody develops in the context of relationships and our faculty genuinely care about student success. Um, they are responsive, they're warm, they're supportive. Um, they do fascinating research. Do we have a research slide, Allison? Or should I talk about that now? Talk about oh, there it, it now. <laughs> I can talk about it, yeah. Um, so our faculty area of expertise is early childhood education. I've been doing a lot of research around early childhood mental health consultation lately. Um, we have faculty who do research in early intervention. We have some faculty who are very interested in autism intervention. Um, we have faculty who look at trauma-informed care, risk and protective factors for refugee and immigrant families. Um, we have a faculty who is looking at the experiences of um, Black families in early childhood education settings using counter narrative storytelling. Um, so we do a lot of really fascinating research and we always have opportunities for students to participate in that research, which is one of the things that I really love. Um, we have study abroad, fingers crossed, hopefully, um, but I've had the opportunity to lead some um, study abroad trips to Guatemala and they're fabulous. Um, and I think we've talked already about our internships. So we really do believe in getting you out into the community. And one of the great things about our internships is the times they lead to our staff being hired. And I actually had a um, great call the other day with one of the directors from Raiders Children's Hospital. And she said, Dr. Garrity, we want to hire your students. Your students come so prepared. They understand about development. They understand about families. They understand about culture. Um, so I think there's lots of different things that you can do with this degree, which I know Allison's going to talk about. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about our major. Yeah, and so a big question that students come to us with is, what can I do with a major in child and family development? Um, and really, CFT prepares our students for so many different things. Um, a lot of our students do want to go into early care and education, maybe to lead a program like Head Start or have their own care facility. A lot of students like Natasha want to go into elementary education or special education. This is a great preparation for both of those. And we actually are developing what's called an integrated teacher's degree and a teaching credential combined in four years. So we're developing one for early childhood special education. It is coming soon. So if you are a freshman admit, this is something that you could very well take part in by the time you're a junior. It's really exciting. And if you're interested in that, um, please come to the ITEP session that's right after this, it's at 2 p.m. Um, but education is not the only thing that our students go into. Um, and we, Michelle and I talk to students every day about what they are interested in as a career so that we can guide them for what classes to take. Um, and so a lot of things that have been coming up, people want to be marriage and family therapists. They want to go into school counseling and psychology. Um, a lot of students want to become social workers. We even have students who are interested in going into law so that they can be advocates for children. Um, we have students who are pre-med and they are doing, they are planning to be a pediatrician or to go into nursing. A lot of students are really interested in becoming a child life specialist. So um, Dr. Berry mentioned Ladies Children's Hospital, which is our, our children's hospital in San Diego. Um, a lot of our students are interested in, in working there or similar children's hospitals working with hospitalized children, explaining in a developmentally appropriate way to them or their siblings what's, what's happening. Um, that's a really popular um, career field and CFC prepares students so well for it. Another really popular career is occupational therapy. So we have a ton of students who are planning to go to OT school, to grad school. So as you can see, there's so many different things that students can do with, with CFD. It doesn't have to just be 
working with babies because I mean a lot of our students really do love babies and I love babies too <laughs> um, but there it really spans the entire the lifespan and so many different um aspects of the human experience, any healthy profession. If you know that you want to be a helper and that you want to help children, CFD is the major for you and you can find your career here in this major. And you might have a lot of questions about that. Uh, we are going to have time, a Q&A time, but I also wanted to introduce Michelle Zamora, who um, is a CFD alumna, and she can talk a little bit about what she's currently doing with, with her CFD training. Hi there, um, I'm Michelle Zamora. I'm actually the director at our SDSU Children's Center and I am a fellow alum of CFD. Um, it's funny, as I was listening to the presentation and talking about careers and I, I not only love SDSU, I love our program here because I've really grown up in the program. I'm a graduate, my undergrad is from SDSU class of uh, 2000 actually. <laughs> Um, quite long ago, and I, I would say, um, Dr. Garrity said it, uh, we cultivate relationships quite deeply in the field that we are in, and um, many of the professors that you guys will encounter are still there. They're the same ones that I had. Um, we have definitely um, obtained some new ones over the years, but I, I think that's what I love about our program in general is that um, people stick around because it's just in our nature. And I think that's what helped many of the students that I've worked with and myself to thrive um, in this career. Um, my background is in CFD. Um, from the very beginning, I started here at SDSU and I was an intern at um, what was back then our child care program on campus. So we had a little program in the basement of our actually actual CFD building department. Um, and I was a student volunteering my time in the classroom. And it just kind of evolved from there. I went through the program for four years and I got a job there and then I graduated and I sadly walked away because I didn't have a full-time job. And I worked uh, for early for early Head Start in Neighborhood House. And then that's actually how I met Dr. Garrity. We crossed paths <laughs> once again in that time. And I just worked out in the field in different sectors. I've worked for Head Start as a teacher. I've also worked for the child development programs with the Navy. Um, helping them create their curriculum for their childcare programs. And then a few years ago, about six years ago, um, my predecessor retired from the Children's Center and I came back and it was my opportunity to um, give back to our program. So at the um, Children's Center here on campus, uh, Tasha had mentioned a lot of most of the times we see you guys first as interns and then you turn into our employees. Um, we have 10 full-time master teachers and I would say eight out of the 10 are CFD alums um, from SDSU and the rest have just been with us forever. Um, one of the great things you'll learn in our program is just that it's very hands-on and that's the thing with working with children and we don't and we aren't just employing um, students who are looking to be teachers it really does start in our program as far as getting to know how to work with children and how to work with families in the structure we have the opportunity to work with them as early as six months old and a lot of our um, parents they're new parents and so it's a great lesson that i hear all the time from students as they graduate that this is their first opportunity to have a conversation with the family and really connect with them, um, whether it be about um, diapering or if they're talking about feeding, if they're working with infants, and then also just creating relationships with their four-year-old and how helping their four-year-olds become 
um, independent and community helpers. So it really does start here, no matter what career you choose with CFD. Um, I'll be happy to answer those questions. We hope um, in the coming months that I'll get to see more and more of the students. Right now we are operating on smaller capacity and meeting in this um, platform, but that's the one part of my job that I love the most is really working with um, the students because we really do value that uh, relationship portion. And that's all we tell our, our four and five-year-olds at the program is that that's really what's important. So I hope to see you soon in our program. Um, I'm happy to give tours. I'm going to drop in the chat box our web address for our website so that you can take a virtual tour at least of what our program offers, not only as a student, but also if at any one time, um, most of our um, enrolled children are, their parents are alumni of the program of SDSU. So at one point you might need our services actually as a parent, but I hope that's in the very distant future because I would love for you to finish school first and then come join us later on in life. So welcome. Awesome, thank you so much, Michelle. So um, I was going to put some pictures and things in here, but I was a little bit worried about my internet. So I figured what's what better than to just have you follow some of the accounts that we have on Instagram so you can see some of the great pictures of what our department community does, what CFD SO does. So go ahead and follow um, both our department and the student org on Instagram. And you can see the job opportunities, the opportunities to engage, to get involved um, and to get to know one another. So go ahead and give those a follow. Um, and while you're kind of logging into Instagram and doing that, um, I just wanted to kind of um, add on to what um, Michelle and Dr. Kiriti have mentioned about like, all of the relationships and like our wonderful faculty. Um, Michelle Zhang and I see students all the time who, you know, we do more than just help you pick out your classes, although that is a big part of what we do is help pick classes, but sometimes there are struggles. Everybody um, encounters challenges and you could not be in a better department in the entire campus of SDSU because our professors are so caring and so supportive and so focused on um, all student success and getting to know everybody. So it's really, the College of Education is a small cozy place at a big university. Not every department, we're actually the smallest college on the entire campus. And then CFD is a, a, you know, a major within that. So we really are small and close knit and it's easy for you to get to know your professors and it's easy for you to get to know your advisors. Um, and it's easy for you to get to know other students as well and really get engaged in that. So I did mention the College of Education and here's another account for you to follow on Instagram. Um, the College of Education Office for Student Success, that's where Michelle and I work. Um, as academic advisors. And so the whole Office for Student Success is to support all of the students in the College of Education. Um, CFD majors, CFD minors, liberal studies students, credential students, graduate students, um, everybody is supported by this office. So that is a great account to follow as well. And then this is the email address where you can reach me and Michelle. Um, email us, the academic advisors, for any questions you have about the CFD major, whether you're an incoming freshman or a transfer student, or you just, you're wondering is CFD uh, the right major for me, or maybe you know it's the right major for you and you just can't wait to learn more about it, please email us. And we'll put that in the chat as well. Um, this is just, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen just for a minute so we can do um, we can do some Q&A and then I'll come back to this just, just kind of sum up why CFD is so great. Um, but you know, you've heard from advisors, from the department chair, from a current student, from a past student. What are some questions that we can answer for you? Um, please feel free to put it in the chat. 
Um, or if you want to turn on your camera or your mic and ask a question, we'd love that too. It's a small, it's a pretty cozy group. I was going to say something I forgot to mention. I did drop our um, website on there, uh, especially for you transfer students. It may be a time that you're thinking about looking for a place to work. So we are looking for assistant teachers. About 80% of our workforce work with our full time staff to help um, make up our ratio of teachers. So we're looking for everybody in um, different experience levels from um, no units to all the way to 12 units. So if you go to our website, you'll be able to find out how to apply. So come on down. Um, we hire basically on a semester basis. So as we are getting ready for um, this semester to end, we'll start looking for new staff um, as early as the end of May into June for our summer because we are open year round. Thanks. So we're, we're getting some questions here in the chat. So Pamela, nice to see you. We saw you in the liberal studies info session. So you're looking for CFD as a minor. Would, would we say this is possible? CFD as a minor is awesome. So we'd love to have everybody here as a major, but if you are just looking for CFD to complement whatever you're choosing as your major, yes, CFD is super possible. Um, it only requires 12 upper division classes and you can do all of them over the summer. So you can even do it without, you know, overloading your, your other semesters. With your, prime, with your primary major. So yes, CFD as a minor is totally possible for everybody at SDSU. Um, and then we have another question that maybe Dr. Garrity can answer this. Are there any autism research programs available for undergrad students? Yes, that's a great question. Um, actually, three of our faculty, Dr. Reeve, Dr. Hainschlegel, and Dr. Dixon, um, are very focused on autism research. I know that Dr. Reith and Dr. Dixon work primarily with children, whereas Dr. Hain Schlegel works with parents. Um, so we have a class called CFD 499, and it's an independent study class. And in that class, undergraduates get to work with the professor on their research. So generally what will happen is we might send out an announcement through Allison or Michelle and say we're looking for a research assistant in our lab and you apply. Um, it's also really exciting because we've had some faculty from outside of CFD also want to work with our students on research. So um, I just think they know that because we are child and family development, we are very broad. So lots of great research opportunities for anybody who maybe wants to go to graduate school or who just wants to learn a little bit more. Um, Michelle, we have a lot of Michelle's in this session. <laughs> Michelle Logue asked, is there guidance towards getting a teaching credential? Yes, absolutely. So, and maybe Tasha can talk about that a little bit. I know you're, you're taking some of your prerequisite classes right now. Um, how did you find out about teaching credential and, and getting guidance for that? Hey, um, honestly, I would say in the CFD, CFDSO initially, um, my freshman year, there were some upperclassmen that were wanting a teaching credential and they kind of talked to me about it because I was curious and I asked how to do it. And then I went to um, Allison, I think my sophomore year, like first or second semester. And I told her I was interested in um, working towards the credential program. So she like helped me make a plan of the classes I needed to take because there are some prerequisites for the credential program, but it's only like three or four classes. It's not um, that many extra classes to do it. Um, so yeah, it's basically just, if you're able to talk to your advisor, she like helps greatly with um, preparing you for that and making sure you're taking the right prerequisites. And she talked to me about um, like the, the tests to get ready for and like making sure I had the um, field work hours. Um, so basically like you can talk to um, upperclassmen that are going through it. You can talk to your advisor, you can um, CFDSO. We have um, people that can also talk to you about it. Uh, it's basically just reaching out to people. And there's also some info sessions, I think. So that will also help. Um, there's just a variety of resources. There's a lot of people you can talk to. Just don't be afraid to ask questions is like my advice for that. 
That's great advice. Uh, we do have like prospective credential advisors in the Office for Student Success. You can talk to me and Michelle as your advisors. And we do every fall offer something called credential application monthly meetups. So Tasha, this upcoming fall, you're gonna come to those because we help students um, navigate the application to their credential program because there's a lot of different pieces. So there's tons of support for um, getting a teaching credential, but also if you're interested in graduate programs like master's degrees, we have a few master's degree programs in CFD, um, but also a lot of our students are interested in going into like counseling and like we said, marriage and family therapy. So those are all housed in the College of Education. So most CFD students don't have to travel very far for their for their next step. Um, Victoria's question is, can I use ASL as my minor for CFD? Unfortunately, SDSU doesn't have a minor in ASL, but CFD is a major that usually has space for students to, to minor in something. So a lot of students do minor in Spanish is probably one of our most popular minors, but then also there's a minor called counseling and social change that is offered by the counseling and school psychology. Um, department and so um, or social work a lot of our students also minor in social work so if you're interested in you know CFD being your major and then finding something related it's very easy to fit in a minor and Michelle and I help students kind of make an education plan and find out where to put the, all of those minor classes. Um, Catherine's question, do you get to work with the SDSU child care program starting freshman year or is that something you wait until other years to do? That's a great question. So most students get to start in their freshman year. Um, Tasha mentioned CFD 270 and 270L. 270L is the very first class where you get to start observing children. Um, so it's that hands-on experience. Every, every semester you will have a class where you um, work with children, you get to have a hands-on experience. And also adding on to that, I, to like actually work there, I applied my freshman year in November, and then I started working my second semester. So if you want to actually work there as well, you can start your first year. Um, uh, I think it, it might be possible to start in fall. I have no idea, but I know personally, I started in spring because I didn't know about the <laughs> football. So I applied in fall and started working in spring my freshman year. I, I can answer that as well if as far as working at the center. So um, community care licensing does require that our um, employees have at least six units, um, either currently taking them or already taking them. So we do have quite a few freshmen that start in their first semester because you're probably taking those courses as we speak. And so as long as we um, have proof that you're registered for those classes, then we are able to have you start as soon as you're willing. I think that kind of goes with the, with Nikolai's question about how many units do you need to work at the SDSU Children's Center? Can you clarify that, Michelle? I can. So for we have two student positions that we have. We have our assistant teacher position, which um, requires basically the six units that I talked about. And then we have our associate level teacher position. And those are what we call um, our certificate teachers. So that requires that you have at least 12 units or more in child development. And at that point, if you are um, at 12 units, then we would ask you to apply for your child development permit. Um, it just gives you the ability to not only work at the center, but um, you'll be at the skill set where you would actually be able to substitute for our full-time teachers on um, a temporary basis. So like for just for like a workday shift sort of thing. So those are the two um, student positions that we have at the available. We also have non-major <laughs> positions available also at the center, which include our front desk staff, so working at the front desk, um, as well as the kitchen. Um, I, I would say for our front desk staff, it's a, kind of a hidden gem for CFD majors, especially for those who consider careers later on um, as a director or in administration. So those are things while you're not directly in the classroom, you learn a lot about the administrative part, especially um, if you decide to stay in preschool or in, in the childcare setting that the front desk position, um, you get to do all the background work and not exactly work directly with children. So 
that those positions, the kitchen and the front desk do not require units. So that might be a good place to start for our um, freshmen who don't quite have those units yet. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, I got a, a question about um, something that was mentioned. I don't know how many of you went to the general college of education session at 10 this morning, but if you did, um, you might've um, heard about study abroad and uh, travel abroad and things like that. So I have a question about um, what, which one is required for CFD, travel abroad or study abroad? Um, and the, the answer is um, we have a lot of options. <laughs> so in CFD, we just call it the graduation requirement because it's not strictly studying abroad. You can study abroad for a semester or you can travel abroad for a short trip. Um, or you can conduct research with faculty like Dr. Garrity was talking about, like the autism research and things like that. Or you can do a community-based learning experience, which is like an internship. So all of those options are available for our students in order to complete their graduation requirement. And most students wait to do them until their senior year. So if you are an incoming freshman, you've got lots of time to learn and think about this and things will certainly change over the course of this year. Right now, you know, nobody's studying abroad um, and a lot, there's a pause on a lot of other things. Um, if you're an incoming transfer student, then maybe next year you will get a chance to, to take advantage of these things. So we have lots of flexibility for that. These are all great questions. Is there anything, anything else? I'm wondering if there are any parents on the call. Maybe not. Okay. Well, if you're a parent and have any questions for me, I'm happy to answer them. <laughs> Okay, I'm keep keep the questions coming in the chat box if you are if you still have questions. I'm gonna go back to one of our my, my last slide to kind of wrap things up and give you some things to think about. Um, I'm just gonna say I'm gonna head out because I have to go to my appointment. But thank, thank you so much, Sasha. I hope I answered anyone's possible questions about the major. It's great. I love it. I have no complaints. It's it's a really unique major to have. And like my friends in other majors, they don't have as close knit of a community. So it's definitely really cool. I really enjoy my time here. Thank you so much. That's really good to hear. Uh, we, we work really hard to have a nice um, close knit community like that. And I cannot find my final slides. So um thank you nikolai for bringing a question um does sdsu have a master's program for, for special education dr garrity do you want to talk about that a little bit yes we do have um a master's program for special education and actually cfd and the special ed department work really really closely together we have some shared classes we have our itep program um i can yeah all the faculty in the special ed department are amazing. Um, I work on some grants with them and like us, they're really focused on children in the context of the family and the community. And they have lots of wonderful um, student teaching opportunities in their master's program. I know I saw a question in the chat about can students in CFD graduate in four years? Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Michelle, do you have anything that you would like to say about that? Yes, CFD students, you can totally graduate in four years. Um, like Allison had mentioned earlier, most CFD students, you can also have the opportunity to add on a minor and it won't add on additional time. Right, it won't add on too much additional time. You can take on a summer as well. Um, so yes, our students um, do graduate within four years because we like to make sure that every class counts. Um, Isabel has a question about who can assist us to apply for the 
California teachers permit. Um, if you're referring to a teaching credential, like if you want to teach elementary school, can, you know, kindergarten through sixth grade, middle school, high school, um, anybody in the office for student success can can help with that. But Michelle and I are usually the first people that our CFD majors come to. We can answer a lot of questions and then we can refer you to whoever can help you further. Um, Brianna asks, to work, do we have to have the units and the experience of working with children? I, I think Michelle's more like, with like, you know, there's a job you get, the more you can do. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have a couple of transfer student questions. So if you're a transfer student, is it usually two years to graduate from CFD or could it be less? It's typically two years. Um, if you if you wanted to do it in less than two years, it would mean taking a lot of classes during the summer, which would kind of be like a full semester. So two years is it's designed for for transfer students to get through in two years. Um, and again, Michelle and I help with keeping everybody on track for that. And Alex, I think if um, Michelle Zamora mentioned that um, transfer students can also apply um, to to work at the SUSU Children's Center, and then you can also um, usually like one of the very first classes that you take at SDSU, you might have an opportunity to do your field experience hours in the Children's Center. So um, those were all really great questions. So I just wanted to kind of wrap everything up to just kind of say, why is CFD so great? Why should it be the major for you? Just as a reminder, like the faculty is so wonderful. Again, you could not ask for a more caring faculty, more understanding. Um, and dedicated faculty. And you have the support of the College of Education, Office for Student Success, and me and Michelle Zhang as your advisors from the moment you start at new student orientation all the way to commencement, which we'll probably be working at as well. <laughs> um, so we see a lot of students walk across the stage. This year will be pro probably virtual, we'll be celebrating, but in future years, I think we'll be back walking across the stage. Um, like Tasha said, you have CFDSO, which is a great way to get involved, to engage with community, your fellow students, but also the, the bigger community in San Diego and put your learning into practice. Um, there's so many learning and employment opportunities at our Children's Center on campus. You have so many opportunities to be in other um, lab placements with different hands-on learning. You can do research, internships, study abroad. You can participate in our ITEP um, program once it's up and running if you want to get a credential in early childhood special education. And of course, lastly, can't emphasize this enough, CFD is a great preparation for any helping profession. So if you know that you want to help kids, this is the place for you. So we hope that this has answered a lot of your questions about CFC. We hope it's made you excited to join us here at SCSU. Um, we have some more time, so we're happy to stay and answer some more questions. 